Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, so uh, my name is Dimitri, um, and uh, I am a co-founder and CEO of a local company uh, called GoMeta. Uh, we've got in fact a few of our team members over there, uh, so feel free to stop by and see us afterwards. Uh, we've been around for two and a half years. We're venture back. We raised six million dollars in venture capital. Uh, prior to this, I spent four and a quarter years at Google on the main campus. Uh, before that, I was the chief technology officer of MySpace. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and then prior to that, I built a couple of venture back companies. One was a competitor to YouTube called Bio Networks, and another one was a perimeter here. Uh, so I'm super excited to show you this new platform we are putting into beta tomorrow. Um, the only people who have seen this are our family members and a few of our friends, at, mostly at, at Google and Facebook. Um, and in fact, tomorrow night we're hosting a meetup at WeWork downtown. It's a hackathon. Uh, we still have 20-ish seats left. Uh, and so you will get to play with this thing that I'm about to show you here. It's called Coach. But we also have some stickers, so feel free and stop by. There's a tall guy, Harrison. There he is behind us. He's the tallest guy in the room. Come find me. Come find me. You won't see me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to have some help from uh, from Sean, who's our, our chief architect sitting over there. Uh, and so Koji is a, is a platform uh, that aims to make it dramatically faster and easier to build and deploy uh, web applications. And so it sort of consists of a number of things. One is a template store. You can think of this as sort of being GitHub uh, with the capabilities for monetization. So you as developers can submit templates into the template store and specify how people can clone those templates whether for free or for a fee, and sort of any additional licensing parameters that you might want to have. There are a few templates here that our folks have created. We'll play with them here in a second. Um, and you can see they'll be tagged, so we expect us to have many templates. Uh, and so to clone a template, you basically just choose one. This is the game Candy Crush. Anybody know Candy Crush? One of the most popular games ever made, right? And, and so it's got a readme page. In fact, this is just marked down. So you can make it look like anything you want, and then we can clone this template, and all we have to do to clone it, we don't have to open up a terminal, we don't have to sort of understand Git, even though this uses Git behind the scenes, we can just give it a name, and I can just call mine superhero, and say create project. And so instead of cloning uh, this repository onto my computer here, uh, it is actually creating a, a Docker container, it's spinning up a Docker container, on an EC2 instance and on AWS. It takes about 30 seconds to do this. Um, we're thinking of maybe doing some kind of fun, maybe squirrel jumping around or something, <laughs> sort of like this white motor thingy. Uh, but what's cool about that is like now you can develop like on any machine, on a Chromebook, on a tablet. I sometimes like to give these demos on, a, on an iPad. You should have a keyboard, like a USB, uh, 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 Bluetooth keyboard, which makes it sort of better. But, but generally, this thing is, is ready to go. In fact, it is ready to go here. So you can see we've got a terminal down at the bottom here. I'm going to collapse it. We've got a readme here. Uh, and again, this is just Markdown, so you have access to this. Uh, and so we have all of our code here, by the way. So this editor here is the only thing we didn't create. Uh, this is using a, uh, an open source project from Microsoft called Monaco. This is what Visual Studio Code is wrapped around. This is what Atom is wrapped around. It's got all the goodies. Intellisense, there, etc. And so we can edit our code directly in here. Uh, this does use React, although we do not care whether you use React or any other JavaScript framework or no JavaScript framework. The only thing your project has to do is have a package.json file and this additional directory here, these .coji files, which is just some more JSON that tells the editor what to do with these things. Uh, this one happens to use uh, React style components, so we can edit our CSS here in place. Um, and of course, we also have our, as I like to call it, remote local host, uh, which is our preview here. And so we can play this game. Uh, this game was made by Alex over there. I call him Lemonhead. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a loving term. Uh, and uh, it's got uh, a background sound here I'm going to mute. 
Um, and by the way, I can spin this out. It's staged, so we can play it on uh, sort of a bigger screen. We can play it on a tablet, which some of my kids like to play these things. Uh, we can also click here on this embedded preview, and we can scan this QR code, and we can develop this game while playing it on our phone. It actually sets up a socket connection, so you can see changes happen in real time. And as you can see here, we've got a few people I see that scanned it. We actually have access to their uh, logs off the phone. Well, a lot of people scan it. <laughs> okay, keep those things open. Uh, and of course, you know what happens when you give people access to code. Uh, and by the way, I used to be a professional developer. I did it for many years, and then like, I became a product guy and an entrepreneur. And these days, I love to code, but I'm really horrible at it, and I'll show you how horrible. Uh, this seems to me like it should be a capital R. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we're going to hot rebuild this thing, and we're going to get an error. And so in today's world, we're going to open up Chrome Dev Tools, right? And we're going to copy our error, and we're going to paste it to Google. We're going to find ourselves on Stack Overflow, and we're going to beat our head against the wall. Trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with this thing, right? Uh, but we don't have enough time during this demo, so we're not going to do that. We're going to take advantage of another feature we have here. So Koji is a is a uh, collaborative development environment. It's a CDE instead of an IDE, and so uh, we have some capabilities to take advantage of that. Uh, one of those capabilities is the ability here to create a post uh, into uh, our community, and so I can actually instead of opening up Chrome Dev Tools, we actually capture this error here. So I can just copy it from here. And then I can go and I can create a little post and say, you know, help, please. And maybe paste this here and here and say create a post. This can create our post. I'm going to spin this out just to show you. There's this posts tab, and here's my post sort of sitting here waiting. Please, somebody, somebody help me. And I can go about my business uh, doing my thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden I get this little, what do we call this little town? I like it. It's new. Just made it today. Uh, some alert, and you can see up here there's like a message waiting for me, and here's Sean, he says, hey, you're doing great, thank you, thank you. Okay, and so one of the things I can do is I can, uh, by the way, we're gonna make this even better, but for now I've got to click, click this collaborate uh, button, I'm gonna copy this little collaborate link, and I'm gonna paste it in here, and soon this will be all effortless. And I'm gonna send it to Sean. Again, I can go about my business showing me the various parts of what this thing is. Until Sean decides to join me in this session, I can look at his profile, make sure he's not crazier than he actually is, and, and then I can say, yes, start session. And so at this moment, now you're gonna have to trust me and those people looking behind Sean can see, he sees my screen and only the things that I'm showing him. So if I've got a bunch of private keys stored somewhere here, I'm not gonna show those to him. But I can certainly take him to the page where I'm having this problem, and I'm gonna stop, and he's gonna, can you highlight some stuff for us, Sean, just yeah. to make sure? See, he's already fixed it, he's so fast, I can't talk that fast. All right, thank you very much, and he's gonna save it for us, and this thing is gonna work again, and this is great. Uh, and uh, so that's kinda cool, right? We didn't have to waste a bunch of time doing these things that I'm not very good at doing. Uh, but instead of doing things in code, the, uh, the creator of this template can add some additional JSON files, basically, and they go into this .koji directory right here. And what these files do is they basically abstract the, the code and sort of uh, abstract the things that might be most commonly customizable. And by creating these, these objects here, for example, type color, we render them here as these you know, color pickers, for example. Or we can go into game settings, and this thing is called Gem Match. No, I call it Superhero. Right, and it says Start. I'm going to sort of say Start Game. I see something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, you see, these things are changing in real time here, right? And I can obviously change the font face. I can change the width of these things. By default, this is five by eight. I can make this, for example, ten by twenty. Right, and this thing will restart, and then. We Play it and it'll be much, much bigger. I just have to refresh this. It's a little bug I know about that we need to fix. Um, and uh, uh, so I'll actually take this back to uh, 8 and this back to 5. 
Uh, I can quickly change the background image. All I need to do is just find some JPEG online or have one on my computer and simply say change. And I can either upload a file or import it from URL and repost it. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna repost this thing. And now this is gonna change. It's now our game looks different. And then of course we can change the pieces. And again, all of these things are created by code and is, are then rendered in these different controls based upon the type, image, and, and other things that are here, right? And so by changing these game pieces, I can very quickly turn this game into this game here, which is what I made in about seven minutes for my kids. They love it, my wife hates it, they love to play it on the tablet, she has to like, pull the tablet away from them. And, and this is, you know, superhero crush, and, and these things make sounds and, and do their things. Uh, and, uh, and so once we're sort of good to go with uh, our, our game here, by the way, there's a thing that I'm not gonna show you because we don't have it yet, but soon you'll be able to marshal sort of n number of users to play with your project in its current state, because it's staged. <coughs> and so we can sort of send push notifications to people in the community who want to do this. It'll probably be a paid feature because we got a fan to probably play your stupid game. Uh, and they'll give you feedback. They'll record their screen and their microphone, and you can get a bunch of feedback from 100 people playing your game, make sure that it's good. It's not ready yet, so I can't show it to you. Um, but uh, let's say that we're sort of done with it. All we have to do to deploy it is you know, go to Amazon and log into aws.amazon.com and create an account and go to that crazy, no offense, Amazon, thank you for hosting us. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, if, if our, our, our security zones and our geo zones and all that, I've never been able to personally figure it out. I'm just not that smart. And so because of that, uh, Sean was gracious enough to make it a little bit easier for us. And I can just call this Supa Hero and say deploy now. And that's actually all we need to do in a minute. We will be in production. Meanwhile, uh, we can go ahead and configure soon. Coming soon, as you can see a custom domain name. Uh, we can add a manifest file and some service workers to make this a PWA. Uh, you can choose to automatically have this package it for you as Electron apps. You'll get Windows, Mac, and Linux links that you can distribute and have you know some these things sitting in a dock and have your menu bars and all of that. Uh, we can automatically wrap them for you as packages you can submit. You still have to have accounts on these systems too the iOS app store and the Google Play store. Uh, we will have an app store of our own. These things don't need an app store, they're just web apps, but people might want to discover these <laughs> app stores. By the way, you will be able to specify monetization parameters. You may say that after a number of seconds, this thing puts up a paywall and that you gotta pay a dollar to play this game. You specify the time and the amount, of course. Uh, if somebody created that superhero game, seeing how my kids love it, would I pay a dollar for it? I absolutely would. I'd probably pay like maybe five bucks for it. Oh, oh, lost connection. All right. It's all right, listen, we're, we're flying. This is pre-beta. Beta tomorrow, okay? Uh, and, and you get these things, okay? What's that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for helping for all this trouble with this thing. Uh, by the way, how am I doing on time? Anybody, anybody? Five more minutes, yeah? We have five minutes? Yes, no, Anthony, somebody? Okay, I'm gonna assume we have five more minutes because I, I, want, to, I want to deploy, you know, sort of build and deploy a, a new version of Twitter. If you guys don't mind, that'd be kind of cool. Let's just, let's just do that in the next five minutes and, and, and see if that works, all right? Okay, so now we can go back to projects. We're sort of done with this thing. And I'm gonna go back to the template store and there's some templates here. By the way, here's Create React App. I don't know of an easier way to get Create React App. You only got to do is give it a name and wait 30 seconds and it's in the cloud for you. But we're going to use this other one, Microblog. And uh, I'm going to use this template and I'm going to call this one Stanford Connect. I'm going to create this project. We're going to make a Twitter, but we're going to restrict it only to registrations from people who can authenticate. That's a lot of words with stanford.edu email address. So if I said to a new group of developers, I'm this guy, I can't code, but I wanna create this Twitter-ish thing, and to restrict it, well, how long would you quote me to be able to create this app for me and sort of get it into production? Longer than five minutes? Probably, okay. Just checking, I make sure, listen, some of you guys might 
might be super quick. So that other thing we had was just this like front end thing. You know, I, I'm not knocking your, your app, it was really cool. But this one is a full stack app, right? It's a Twitter clone. And so we've got our terminal again, we've got our front end, back end. And as you can see, we've got front ends and back ends here. This is using Express. And so we have our various routes, and so we can get access to our various routes. Here they are. By the way, not only do we have front end previews, we have back end previews. So you don't have to run, and again, especially if you're sort of developing on some shared machine, you might not be able to install something like Postman. And so we've got this sort of built in so we can send requests and get responses and, and do all of that. And uh, look, listen, uh, I gotta be honest with you. If you asked me to go and, and write this route from scratch, I could do it, but it would take me a while. I'd struggle with it. But if you ask me to take this route and simply restrict it to stanford.edu, it's pretty straightforward, right? You must provide a valid email address at stanford.edu, and then we'll go up here and we'll catch this thing, or not email. Oh, I need to run to type. Uh, stanford.edu, I'm gonna save this. So we're done with our back end, congratulations. And I can go into the front end and do all that stuff in code, but as you know, we've got these abstractions, and so we have global strings you could put in here, for example. Again, when I say we, I mean, the creator of this template simply abstracted it, and so I can just go in here and say Stanford Connect, and this will change it across the entire app, what's happening you know, at Stanford right now. Uh, right now, and then I can go, of course, into my visual style, and this looks a little bit too much like Twitter, and so I can make my primary color pink. Refresh. I can refresh my thing. Full browser. Full browser. By the way, you should all have a Sean with you in the film. It makes these things much easier. <laughs> Okay, we've got some pink going on over there. Thank you very much. We can maybe make our colors, our text colors blue. Yes, there we go. We can make our background less white. This thing does it across the app. You can see we changed it to Stanford Connect here, Stanford Connect here. We can create an account. This thing will restrict us, yada, yada. We can deploy it, give it a name, and then we can be done with it. I'm not gonna launch it because we don't want to launch a Stanford thing. So I'm sorry, I lied in my title of the thing, but I just don't want to watch a bunch of Twitter comments. Uh, okay, I hope this makes sense. I'm sorry it was sort of all over the place. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. We're looking to you, if you're interested, to come play with us and create some templates, play with our templates, find the edges of this product. I'm sure it's got a ton of bugs. Uh, maybe not a ton of bugs, a few bugs. And, uh, and uh, we're looking for developers of all uh, uh, sort of proficiency. So if you're super junior, you don't even know how to spell code, we want you. And if you're super senior, we want you to maybe even more. Okay, are there any, oh by the way, when we deploy, when we do deploy these like backends, like how do you deploy these backends? And so these things get, all these routes get packaged up as serverless endpoints, so lambdas, or potentially later Google Cloud functions. Um, and uh, there's also a, a persistent data store in there. This template was using uh, Firebase, although we obviously don't care what the database is, but that template was using Firebase, and in fact was uh, using a wrapper around the Firebase API that takes advantage of our Firebase account. So you don't even need to go and create your own account, it basically just namespace our account. So you can watch this thing. Does any of this make sense? Cool questions? Do we still have time for questions? We have a few, a few questions. Oh, great. If you want to take it off there, I'm sorry? If you want to take it off, take it off. Oh, yes, you will be, not yet, but you will be able to export this thing. There's nothing proprietary here, right, in this. So if you want, soon we'll have a, a, a CLI tool, and so you'll be able to, if you want, put it off on, on a local machine and, and sync it. This thing just uses Git, so you can sync all of this. Uh, you'll be able to export all of this, and if you don't want to deploy it to us, you can take the code and deploy it uh, to whatever cloud you want, or any way you want. The function isn't available there yet, but it will be. I'm assuming all the platform UI is built with React. Yes, it is. Okay, I'll have a lot of online questions about the Mac on React and how it all. Cool. Sean's your guy. Yes. 
So it looks like most of the customizations are like string substitutions right now, probably. So I'm curious, like how sensible you already have it or are planning on making that next step? Um, Sean, do you want to answer that? Yeah. Uh, so yes, simple string substitutions. The idea is that like, so typically these like low code, no code platforms, the edges they hit are like, once you can't do something with it, you're screwed and you've got to rebuild the thing from scratch. So like the idea here is that we make the things very <coughs> simple to customize simple to customize, and if you want to do anything more complex, you dive into the code. And you've got this like help thing and these posts to help you do it. Like, you know, some contract developer could be sitting here monitoring you. They might charge you, you know, 15 bucks to go in and make your, you know, loop do something else. We're not going to try and write a visual abstraction for right. a loop. Yeah. Yes? So, to be fair, you're targeting us, right? Yeah. Like, you know, this is it. Are you going to sell this to the developer? So, so we expect the business model to, to be as follows. Uh, you can use this tool free of charge. If you clone templates that are free, they're free. Uh, the developer who uploads this template uh, specifies the sort of licenses for the template. If they charge for it, then you've got to pay for that template. Uh, if you deploy through us, then you deploy to the Amazon Cloud, we will bill you. Uh, if you use that marshalling function uh, of being able to get a bunch of people to go and play with your app, sort of mid-bill, we'll need to pay those people and we'll take some margin from it. Uh, if you choose to charge for your release app, and you're making money on that through our app store, we'll take a piece of it. But generally, we're basically sort of taking pieces of, of things on, 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 on. You know, if you're making money, we'll make pieces. But, but the tool itself is free. I'm curious about the percentage that you would take for your app store. No idea. 98%, something like that? <laughs> when you were making changes to like the Candy Crush app that you were making, did those changes hard reload for people that scan the QSM? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, did anybody see that? No? Uh, come tomorrow and you'll see it. Yes, they do. They hard reload. There's actually a socket connection set up to a nine frame. So it's actually really powerful, thank you for bringing that up. If you're working with, let's say, if you're a developer, you're working with a client that's remote, they can literally be on your on their phone, sort of saying to you, oh, I sort of like this or I don't like that. And they're seeing the changes in real time as you, as you change these things. Yes? So can, you mentioned you can export projects out. Soon. Soon. Um, what about the ability to import projects? And what does that do to the whole kind of like store model that you got going on with you know cloning templates and things what would stop somebody from actually just taking out a template once they bought it and sharing it on github or or it's not github but something yeah. a little bit more uh, renegade it's a great question uh in any of these things so so one of the companies i i built before i went to myspace and google uh was a company called Neo networks which is a competitor to youtube yeah, people used to talk a lot about DRM, digital rights management, people still do so. Then the day generally we're sort of not worried about that. There are, there are sort of legal provisions that we can take to deal with that. But generally we, we think that people are going to behave well and if they don't, we're going to come to their house. <laughs> wrong things <too. laughs> But by the way, it's great. I hope that let me expand on that question is that uh, how do you create a template? Like, what is a template? Well, like you can actually take a GitHub repository and basically clone it into uh, into Koji, uh, add a few uh, JSON files that, that you basically let the Koji editor understand what this thing is, and now import it as a template. It has to go through our approval process, so we need to make sure you're not doing any sort of barriers. But generally, you can take it's just JavaScript and, and make it work. Yeah. And if you're familiar with like the, the definitely typed repository for TypeScript, how they kind of Community source findings for <coughs> packages. We do something similar. We have a Koji stubs repository on GitHub, and like Create React app just clones Create React app from GitHub, but it references these stubs that someone created in the community repo that say, okay, it runs on this port. Here's the start command. Here's the build command. Here's the you know. Yes. Uh, if you deploying like an entire Chrome app, is it deploying in native code or is it just like a container? It's, it's creating a wrapper of a web view. 
and get you packaged to submit to the to source. So you still need to have an iOS developer account and go through all of that. Okay. We're gonna, if you guys have any more questions, we can jump in. Perfect. Um, we're gonna be the last speaker. Yeah, so Thank you so much. Yeah.